I can't believe that I'm saying this. In fact, I wasn't even planning on making a review of Disney Plus, but I think it might be the best streaming platform available today. Better than Netflix, better than Amazon, maybe even better than HBO. Well, probably not better than HBO, but definitely better than Netflix and Amazon. Here's why. Disney Plus is the first streaming platform that I've used in a long time that actually has content that I find I wanna watch. It's crazy, I've never experienced anything like it. I scroll a couple times and oh, there's a movie I wanna see. Scroll a couple more lines, oh, I remember that movie. I definitely wanna rewatch that. And not only do I wanna watch Disney Plus's content, but scrolling through their library of content is like a nostalgic journey through the memories of your childhood. I know that sounds corny, but it's true. As I was going through their content, I would see one movie after another, one show after another of things I watched growing up and I had completely forgot that I loved that content. I was actually getting emotional scrolling through Disney's library of content, looking through all of these shows and movies that I had loved growing up. Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, Disney's first animated feature film, came out in 1937. You have 90 years of Disney original content available to you anytime you want, and that alone might make Disney worth the price that they're charging for it. Now, if you were a Disney kid like I was, there's a whole lot of other stuff that you might remember once you start scrolling through. You got the Herbie movies, you got Swiss Family Robinson, you got DuckTales, the original DuckTales, Chippendales Rescue Rangers. There's also a ton of great Disney Christmas content, which I remember watching as a kid. I love the Mickey Mouse Christmas specials. Those are all on there. Now, if you're a Simpsons fan, they have all of the Simpsons content, all 30 seasons available to you. And it looks like it's been remastered and re-edited for wide aspect screens. It looks great even on my 16 by nine 1080p screen. And when the Simpsons came out, all the TVs looked like squares. So there's that. There is the historic content library that you know and love that you're gonna wanna rewatch again and again, that you're gonna wanna watch with your kids. Like if you have kids, this service is kind of a no brainer. But you don't just get the old content, you get the new content. You get all the Star Wars movies, you get all the Marvel movies. But in true form, that Disney magic that they're known for is weaved into the actual app and makes you feel like a kid just using the app. Here's what I mean, when you click on the little icons that represent the shows that are contained within, they have these beautiful little animations that get you in the spirit of the content that you're actually about to watch. When you dive deeper and you dive into the actual content screen, you'll see a big, beautiful, animated superhero image that gets you into the mood to watch the content that's there on the screen. Since Disney owns all of the content that they're showing you, they can do whatever they want with the presentation and they've weaved in a magical experience just into showing you what content you're about to be watching. Now I realize these are dumb little details that a lot of people are gonna roll their eyes and just be like, this guy's out of it. He's way too old to be talking about this stuff and they're just gonna leave. But for those of you that are still here, you know what I'm talking about, that Disney magic sensation, what they're so known for, that stuff that they try to weave into all their products, that is what you're paying for here and that's definitely what you're getting. And it's not just the impactful way, the nostalgic way that the content is presented to you. You're able to personalize a service in a cool way too. So you can create up to seven different profiles and you can select from a huge list of Disney character avatars to make your main image for your profile. It's another unnecessary but cool feature. And when you go in and you're ready to watch content and you see Darth Vader sitting there, and you're like, let's do this Darth, and you pick Darth Vader, and then your content loads. It's one of those neat little things, one of those small little details that they put in there that makes you love the service. But here's one of the big things about Disney Plus that I think definitely beats Netflix. It's only $7 a month. Now I got a deal for three years where you pay upfront that lowers it to like $4.75 a month. And I think they might still be running these deals from time to time. So you can get it even cheaper if you keep an eye out for it. But for $7 a month, here's what you get. You get up to 4K HDR content at no additional cost. You can stream on up to four different devices at the same time. Now that's something that Netflix charges their top tier price for. I think it's like $16 a month. And you can have up to seven different profiles so seven different people can have their own profiles, be managing their own content. You can set up and manage the profiles so that if your kids are using it, they can only watch kid content. You can do that all from within the app. So for $7 a month, you're getting a ton of value built in there. The HDR, the 4K, the four different streaming devices at one time, the seven different profiles. It's almost like 
Mickey Mouse himself is saying, Hey, buddy, why don't you just go ahead and share your streaming password with all your friends? <laughs> At a time where Netflix and Amazon are clamping down on stream sharing, because let's be honest, we all know this happens. You get a password, you're like, I'm gonna share it with my brother. I'm gonna share it with my friend. So you gotta think, Disney Plus, they must know that you're gonna be sharing this content with your friends and family. In fact, they make it so easy to do and they allow you to have so many different devices and profiles. I think they're just coming out swinging. Disney Plus knows they're behind. They know they need to do something to really win people over. And so they are throwing everything into this service that they could think to throw in. So I know I'm gushing on and on, but I've been loving the content that I've been seeing so far. I've been watching a lot of this historic content, really falling in love with the service. There are some issues though that I would like to see Disney fix, starting with this one. The app, the Disney app on the Apple TV at least, it is kind of buggy. You'll be scrolling through content sometimes and the content just stops loading. They got some bugs worked in there. Look, it's a V1. I totally get that. I'm sure they're gonna iron that stuff out sometime soon. The other thing I noticed is there's no on deck feature. And by that, I mean, if you've been watching content and then you leave the service and come back in, at least in the Apple TV app, there's no area that says, oh, hey, do you wanna jump back into this movie that you were watching? No, there's no way to know what happened. It's like you were never watching the content in the first place. Now, Netflix, Amazon Video, Plex, they all have these big, great areas that show you exactly what content that you've been watching. You could just jump right back in when you're ready and go right back to where you were. Now, maybe that exists in Disney Plus. I haven't found it. And that's one of the other criticisms I have of the app. I kind of find like it, it's kind of confusing to navigate. Like if you want to just view all the movies available in the service, you have to go some crooked way to get there. There's no simple navigation for, hey, here are all the movies and shows that we offer. No, they have everything like categorized into the, these subcategories where it's like, do you want to watch animated movies? Here's our animated movies. If you want to watch Star Wars movies, here those are. And the other thing is, is when you're looking through all of these different smart categories that they have, like sci-fi movies, action movies, you'll find that a lot of the same movies are included inside each one of those categories. And it kind of makes you think, how much content is there in here actually? It seems like they're just reusing all their content inside of all these different categories to make it feel like their library is larger than it actually is. Now I heard that they actually shipped with 500 movies and like 10,000 or 13,000 episodes of shows or something. So there is a lot of content in there, but is 500 movies more or less than Netflix? I'm not really sure. It feels like Netflix and Amazon have a larger, broader library. And that leads me to my final little quibble with Disney is I wonder how they're gonna keep the content fresh. You know, with Netflix, with Amazon, they have these contracts in place where they have content being shown and then moved out and they move in other content. They're, they're using other people's content as well as their own. So they're constantly refreshing all of their episodes and movies for you. Disney's not gonna be able to do that. They had to launch big. They're giving you most of their content as far as I can tell right up front. So what are they gonna do in a year to keep their content fresh? I mean, it's great having all of this historic content and. Disney's making new episodes of programming every year. They're making new movies every year. So that's gonna be nice, but there's not gonna be some huge refresh every six to 12 months of Disney's content because well, it's Disney's content only. They're not gonna show you content by anyone else and they're only making so much content a year. So I'm curious to see how they're gonna keep their content from getting a little stale. Final thoughts though, I will just say this. Absolutely worth $7 a month. If you have kids again, you're gonna love showing them all of these movies that you grew up watching, which is one of the things that Disney is counting on you doing. They're gonna need those new customers. You gotta make sure you make those new customers for them. But even as a full grown man, and look at me, I'm as pure man as it gets. I'm getting misty eyed, I'm getting emotional going through that big beautiful library of content that I used to love and forgot that I love and is there for you to rediscover in a little moment of joy. You'll see something there that you used to watch when you were a kid that you completely forgot about and it sparks that feeling of childhood for you and that is what makes it so magical and I think that is the crux of the Disney Plus service. You're gonna fall in love with the content that you loved all over again. There you go, those are my honest opinions of Disney Plus's new streaming service, I think the best one around. I'm getting a little misty eyed, I'm gonna wrap it up right now so I can maintain my dignity here live on camera. My name is Aaron Elijah, Gadget Hunter. I'm reviewing all the best tech, all the best services. They're all coming to this channel and I'll be talking ad nauseum about all that stuff, whether you want me to, 
or not. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button to see more content just like this. I'm coming back real soon, and I'll see you guys next time. <coughs>